Hello and welcome to the fifth tutorial in the SFML 2.1 series and in this part we're going to be looking at mouse events. You'll be using the source code from the third part of the series. If you don't have it, don't worry, there'll be a link in the description. Okay, SFML has functionality built in to, to detect mouse events and allows you to incorporate functionality for those events. We will look at detecting the following. When a mouse key has been pressed, when a mouse key has been released, when the mouse wheel has been scrolled, uh, when the mouse has been moved, um, when the mouse has left the window and when the mouse has entered the window, window uh, aka the application window. So first of all let's just add a case statement for mouse being pressed. So I'm going to do case sf event mouse button pressed so in here we're going to do std see out the mouse button has been pressed std and line do a break okay so let's move this over click the mouse button and we have mouse button has been pressed so now let's just take that off a second now we're going to do to detect when a particular mouse key has been pressed. So within here, we're going to add a switch statement, and it's going to be event.key.code, and in here, we're going to do case ff mouse left. So when the left button is pressed, the following code will be run. We're going to do a simple C out again for demonstration purposes. We're going to say left key has been pressed. Now let's just run this again, but let's set a break statement first. Okay, so if I just move it over, I just click the right mouse button, but now if I click the left mouse button, it says left key has been pressed. Okay, so that is the mouse button pressed. We're gonna look at the mouse button released. So I'm gonna add a new case. So case ff event mouse button released colon std mouse button has been released std and line. event dot key the code so in here we're going to detect when case sf mouse but we're going to do the right mouse button this time so stdc out right key has been released std and line Let's put a break here. Okay, so if we just move it over, I'm gonna click the did not want to maximize it. I'm gonna move it over, click the left mouse button. It says mouse button has been released, but obviously if I right click, it says mouse button has been pressed, mouse button has been released, then it says right key has been released because we detected for the right key. That is how you detect when a mouse button has been released in general, and then this is how you detect a particular mouse button has been released. So, next step that we're going to be doing is detect when the mouse wheel has moved. So, S at case FF event mouse wheel moved colon std out. Mouse wheel has been scrolled. Let's do the nine break. So let's just run this now. Okay, so I'm scrolling mm -hmm. it. It's a mouse wheel has been scrolled. Um, now what we're going to detect is. The sort of scroll is doing so. I'm going to do std c out and put event 
dot mouse will where is it? That one there dot delta std and line and if we run this you'll see what comes up. Now I'm gonna scroll. It's saying minus one. I am scrolling up. If I start scrolling down, it's a positive number. And watch this. If I scroll really fast, the number increases. Let's just go back on here so you can actually see what I mean. There you go. So I scroll really fast, the number increase, and obviously I'll slow down the number decrease. So you can detect how fast it is going. That is it for mouse wheel being moved. Now we're going to just look at the general mouse movement. So for that we're going to do case sf event mouse moved std c out mouse has been moved std in line and now what we're also going to do, actually, let's just run this first. Okay, so when we move it about, we say mouse has been moved. We're also going to print out, actually, forget to put a break statement. We're also going to print out the Y position. So, out event dot mouse move dot Y. As you can do the X as well, you just saw. It's just as simple as changing the Y to an X. So if I just move this up and down, we are around between 0 and 600, simply because we have a window that's 600 wide. And as you can see, if I move left and right, it pretty much stays. The same the only reason it's changing, because obviously uh, I may be moving slightly up and down when I'm moving it, but I'm just detecting where it is in the a, I mean in the y axis and the final thing we're going to be looking at is actually the two last things we're going to be looking at is mouse entered and mouse left for the window so for that do another case statement sf event mouse entered colon stdc out and we're going to put mouse has entered the window is to the end line break. I'm going to put the final case as well, which is case SF event mouse left. It's just simply because these go hand in hand. So STDC out mouse has left the window. STD line. And now the one thing that I am going to do is just comment this out. The reason I'm going to comment this out is so you can easily see this because otherwise whenever I'm moving the mouse over the window it will just start printing out loads of these. And so let's just restart the application. So I'm just going to move it over. At the moment my mouse is out so now as you can notice even though it's outside I'm just moving it back. It's not saying mouse has left because it's only going to print out or trigger that code when it's inside then leaves. So I'm just going to put it in. It says mouse has entered the window and I take it out. Mouse has left the window, entered the window and left the window and so forth. So that is it for mouse events. Obviously you probably won't want to just do STDC outs. You will want to actually have specific game functionality, but this will give you the good give you a good foundation for moving forward. That's it for this part. In the next part of this series, we're going to be looking at joystick events. If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at sonarsystems.co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can comment on this video or just directly message us via YouTube. All the recordings for the source code will also be in the description. And as usual, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.